Welcome to Statsburg State Historic Site, the Gilded Age home of Ruth and Ogden Mills. My name is Jackie Harbison. I am a historic interpreter. I conduct tours as well as special programs here at the museum. Today, we are going to be taking a closer look at the second floor to see where the unmarried female guests would stay. Statsburg was one of five homes owned by the Mills family and was their residence, typically in the autumn season. Mrs. Ogden Mills had a very active role as a society hostess, extending invitations to other members of elite society as many gatherings, including weekend parties, inviting guests for several days, and providing opulently appointed guest rooms. While married couples were given suites of bedrooms with a bath in the north wing of the mansion, unmarried women were offered bedrooms in the center area of the house on the second floor. In accordance with the social mores of the day, access to this area via the grand staircase descending to the main hall or from stairwells from the wings would have been visible to others in the house. The grand staircase would also have provided young women the opportunity for a dramatic entrance to the main hall as they descended the stairs in several changes of clothing, including formal gowns for dinner throughout the visit. Mrs. Mills inherited the family estate and an earlier version of the mansion built in 1832 after her marriage to Ogden Mills in 1882. Around 1895, Mills commissioned renowned architect Sanford White to redesign and greatly expand the 1832 house of 25 rooms into the 79-room mansion we see today. The rooms in the central core of the mansion we will see are in the portion of the house from 1832. When the mansion was remodeled in the 1890s, it was important to Ruth Mills to keep the original structure and style as an homage to her family heritage. The first of four female guest bedrooms that we will be taking a look at is the Round Rose Room. The bedroom is round as the Mills' architect, Stanford White, retained most of the home's Greek Revival structure, keeping with the room's curved walls, doors, and original style ceiling ornamentation. Notice the older curved door inside the room and the newer pocket door that White added here, providing balance and symmetry. One of the room's more interesting collections is the Louis Vuitton steamer trunk, which dates back to 1893. It exemplifies what a female guest would bring when she would visit the mills and was likely one of several or more trunks that would house her wardrobe and belongings during her stay. Our next room is one of two bathrooms here on the second floor. It is shared by two female guests with doors connecting their bedrooms directly to the bathroom. As one of 14 bathrooms in the house, it has all the modern conveniences that the Gilded Age could afford, including a toilet, a tub, and sink with hot and cold running water. The plumbing was supplied by a 10,000 gallon water tank located in the mansion attic just above the grand staircase in the reception hall. Our next room is the river room. Historically, it was not a bedroom. We think it was likely a sitting room or a dressing room for the female guests. Note the armoire and dresser that would store all of the lady's accessories, as well as the writing desk where she would write about her visit and maintain correspondence. Now you're in the passage hall where we have one of the larger female guest bedrooms. This room was likely for one of the more prominent female guests who would have stayed here as it is much larger and more opulent than the others and for its proximity to the family wing. 
For example, Alice Roosevelt was a guest at Statsburg when her father was president. She was good friends with the Mills' daughters, Gladys and Beatrice. It makes sense that she would have stayed in this room closest to the family wing or possibly in the gold mahogany room, which we will see next. The fabric in this room is consistent with the color in most of the other female guest bedrooms and Mrs. Mills's bedroom, as this shade of raspberry pink was her favorite. The gold mahogany room here could have also have been the room of Alice Roosevelt. The room was originally blue, which was her favorite color. It is the largest female guest room and is unique for its overall gold and mahogany colors. What distinguishes it from the others is that this female guest has her own private bathroom. The bathroom, like the other, also features subway tile on the walls and floor, as well as a toilet installed with the home's 1896 remodeling. The last room on the second floor is the replica maid's room. When the Mills family resided here in the fall season, the maids stayed in the attic above this level. This room was historically another female guest room. However, we have turned it into a replica maid's room as modern fire codes do not permit public tours to view the maid's quarters above. A faux window and faux walls have been installed to give the room its original dimensions. The maids who worked here were typically Irish or Scottish and were all almost exclusively unmarried and without families as they worked 14 to 16 hour days, six days a week. The attic has eight rooms for maids and a bathroom. The housekeeper also had a suite of rooms in the female staff quarters. One of the more interesting architectural features in the passage hall is a hidden staircase that acts as a fire escape for the maids connecting their bathroom to the passage hall below via a trap door. This was a thoughtful addition for the female servants by the home's architect as there were no building codes requiring a fire escape in the 1890s. Thank you for watching today's video of the female guest quarters. For more content, please visit our page, Virtually Statsburg.